So what do we see? We see that eta mu nu plus h mu nu have become eta mu nu plus h mu nu minus epsilon. So g prime mu nu which is eta mu nu plus h prime mu nu is therefore eta mu nu plus h mu nu minus epsilon xi mu comma nu plus xi nu comma mu. In other words, this exercise tells us that under the inferential coordinate transformation, the new metric perturbation h prime mu nu is related to the old metric perturbation h mu nu in this manner. So, in other words, h prime mu nu is simply h mu nu minus epsilon xi mu comma nu plus xi nu comma mu. So, effectively what this tells us is that under inferential coordinate transformation my new metric perturbation is related to the old metric perturbation in the following manner. And therefore, I can use this coordinate transformation degrees of freedom to constrain h mu nu. After all, xi mu is a vector field which is arbitrary. I can choose the xi mu in my own way so that I get the harmonic gauge condition. So, again let us look at the harmonic, uh, look at the uh, trace reversed metric. We know that h bar which is trace reversed met metric mu nu by definition is h prime mu nu is h mu nu minus half eta mu nu h prime and this object therefore is simply because h prime mu nu is given by this I will have h mu nu minus epsilon xi mu comma nu plus xi nu comma mu minus half eta mu nu and trace of h prime trace of h prime is what? It will be eta alpha beta times h prime alpha beta which is h alpha beta minus epsilon epsilon alpha comma beta epsilon beta comma alpha. Okay. So, in other words this becomes h mu nu. Notice that half eta mu nu eta alpha beta uh, h alpha beta is nothing but eta mu nu trace h. So, this is minus half eta mu nu h. So, I have taken this term into account, this term into account. Now, minus epsilon xi mu comma nu plus xi nu comma mu. So, this part also I have taken into account. Remaining part, let us see what has happened here you will have minus half eta mu nu minus will become plus. So, plus half eta mu nu will be there. There is a epsilon also. So, there will be epsilon here and as you can see this eta alpha beta this has minus minus has become plus. So, therefore, it will be xi alpha comma alpha because alpha has been raised to beta, beta is a dummy variable plus again this has also risen. So, eta alpha comma alpha. Okay. And hence what we find is that the trace reversed part. So, h bar prime mu nu is this object is h bar mu nu 
now I can uh, take minus epsilon common and I get xi mu comma nu plus xi nu comma mu and this half xi alpha xi alpha is twice the factor. So, therefore, that half will also go because I have taken minus. So, I will put a negative sign eta mu nu and xi alpha comma alpha. So, this is what h prime mu nu is. So, we want to know that can I choose my vector field xi mu such that the trace reverse quantity comes up. What does one mean by trace reverse? We want so what we have seen therefore is the trace reverse metric in the new coordinate system is trace reverse metric in the old coordinate system minus epsilon xi mu comma nu plus xi nu comma mu minus eta mu nu xi alpha alpha and we want del mu h bar prime mu nu to be 0. This is the condition harmonic gauge condition. So, let us do that because we want to find out the vector field xi mu such that the trace reverse part of the metric satisfies the harmonic coordinate condition and hence what this means is that del mu will act on this. So, let us go and look at that. So, therefore, we find that 0 is del mu h bar mu nu which is del mu h bar mu nu and then minus we have this expression, but then del mu has gone up. Right. Now, note that del mu xi nu comma mu is simply the delumbertian because mu and mu are being contracted. So, therefore, what we have got is that this is del mu h bar mu nu minus epsilon and this is simply the delumbertian of xi nu. So, this is xi nu and this object as you can see is nothing but del nu which is xi alpha which is xi alpha comma alpha comma nu because del mu contracted with eta mu nu will give this and these two quantities are identical, but with opposite sign. So, this goes with this and hence what we have got is del mu h bar mu nu minus epsilon delumbertian of sign. So, what does this exercise tell me? It tells me that if the in the original coordinate x mu, if my trace reversed metric fluctuation did not satisfy the harmonic gauge condition, then we make a coordinate transformation where x mu goes to x prime mu, x prime mu which is equal to x mu plus epsilon zeta mu, where zeta mu is a arbitrary vector field and we demand that in the new coordinate system, this satisfies the trace that is the new trace reverse metric fluctuation satisfy the harmonic gauge. Then all we have to do is choose the vector field xi nu zeta nu which satisfies this equation. In other words, seek zeta nu such that epsilon box zeta nu is del mu h bar mu. So, once we solve this, then we know that in the new coordinate system, the trace reversed metric fluctuation tensor satisfies the harmonic gauge condition. So, that which is the harmonic gauge. 
So, this exercise tells us that we can always choose coordinate system so that we have the metric fluctuation satisfying the harmonic gauge. Now, remember algebraically since h mu nu is symmetric h mu nu h nu mu there are 10 components but harmonic gauge there are xi nu we can choose xi nu such that the there are four of these harmonic gauge condition can be chosen. So, four of the harmonic gauge condition can out of this 10 remove. So, choice of xi mu will reduce the 10 components four of them to six components, six independent components. The question is does it mean that now we have six independent degrees of component? The answer is no, because the condition delta xi nu equal to 1 over epsilon del mu h bar mu nu, if we solve this equation 2 xi nu I can add to the solution. Consider now xi bar nu which is the old xi nu which satisfies this equation plus some new zeta nu nu zeta nu such that delimitation of the new zeta nu is 0. Then if zeta nu nu is a solution of the homogeneous delimitation equation then zeta bar nu also satisfies box xi nu equal to 1 over epsilon del mu h bar nu. So, therefore, you can still add 4 more components zeta nu nu and hence out of 6 components we can reduce it further. So, this implies that out of 6 components 4 can be eliminated. So, that you have only 2 components. This exercise therefore, tells us that there are only 2 independent propagating degrees of freedom for h mean. So, in other words this tells us only 2 independent polarization of the gravitational wave so the h mu nu when there is no matter it satisfies delimitation of h mu nu equal to 0 
which is a wave equation and with this exercise we saw that h mu nu being symmetric h mu nu is h nu mu although there are 10 components but by choice of coordinates namely we can twice choose harmonic gauge condition so that from 10 only 2 components survive suggesting to us that there are only 2 independent polarization for the gravitational wave. So, just like electromagnetism where the electromagnetic waves have only 2 independent polarization even in the case of gravitational wave there are only 2 independent polarization. Now, what we will do is we want to study the problem of how do you generate gravitational wave. For that we have to go back to the Einstein equation with matter. So, this is the Einstein equation with matter and we want to incorporate the matter part also to look into the generation of gravitational wave. So, we write down the Einstein equation which is r mu nu minus half g mu nu r is equal to 8 pi g by c 4 t mu nu. We will which is of course, same as we can raise the whole thing we can say this is uh, r mu nu upstairs minus half g mu nu upstairs r equals 8 pi g by c 4 t mu nu this is all equivalent. So, there is a equivalent sign. Now, what we want to do is this is of course, generally true we want to do it for linear, linearized gravity. We have already so shown that r mu nu with the harmonic gauge condition we have already proved that this is h mu nu. Now, we want to substitute it here and because of this result we know that r which is g mu nu r mu nu which is eta mu nu in this case r mu nu will be simply equal to minus half box of eta mu nu h mu nu, but box of eta mu nu h mu nu is a trace which is minus half box of the trace h and hence our Einstein equation becomes r mu nu we can raise everything is uh, raised or lowered using Minkowski metric and therefore, we get for r mu nu. So, 8 pi g by c 4 t mu nu which is r mu nu minus half g mu nu r becomes minus half box h mu nu. Then minus remember that raising and lowering g mu nu up to first order in h mu nu is just simply eta mu nu and r we have already seen is minus half box of h and hence this object can be written as overall minus half I can take common and overall box I can take common. So, that I get h mu nu since I have taken minus half box common I have minus half eta mu nu h. But lo and behold what have we got h mu nu minus half eta mu nu h is the trace reversed metric. So, therefore, this object is simply minus half box of h bar mu nu. Okay. And hence we have obtained a simpler equation in which the Einstein equation now has become in the case of linearized gravity. So, linearized Einstein equation is simply the D'Alembertian of trace reversed metric fluctuation is nothing but minus half goes there. So, it becomes minus 16 pi g by c 4 
energy moment of tensor. Okay. Now note that our edge bar mu nu we have chosen we have chosen the harmonic gauge so that h bar mu nu derivative with respect x nu is 0. So, this immediately tells me that box 0 is equal to box of del by del x nu of h bar mu nu is 0 and which is same as minus 16 pi g by C 4 del by T mu nu of del x nu. In other words, what we find is that in the linearized framework, there is local conservation of energy momentum tensor. This is essentially telling us that energy and momentum of matter, so energy and momentum of matter is locally conserved. Okay. But can we get a solution? After all, we have derived box of h bar mu nu is given by this expression is there a formal solution to this and the formal solution for such a inhomogeneous differential equation we normally use the greed's function technique in terms of Green's function. Fortunately, we already know the Green's function for such a differential equation. So, we know that box of Green's function, retarded Green's function x mu comma x prime mu So, Green's function always satisfies that box of Green's function will be delta 4 x mu minus x prime mu because in 3 plus 1 dimensional space time we are using the Dirac delta which is a product of del x 0 minus x prime 0, del x 1 minus x prime 1, del x 2 minus x prime 2, del x 3 minus x prime 3. And the corresponding Green's function is known and it is given by, we are interested in retarded Green's function because we know that effect always comes later than the cause and the retarded Green's function is given by 1 over 4 pi by r minus r prime delta of t minus what this tells us. So, this is the retarded Green's function. These are something which one is familiar from electrodynamics when one tries to get the electromagnetic wave from dipole oscillation of charges, we normally use the Green's function, retarded Green's function. So, this 
so that if something happens at time t prime by the time it uh, affects t it should move by a distance r minus r prime so that all effect progresses with speed of light c. Now what do we do? We since we know the Green's function therefore I can directly obtain how h bar mu nu is given in terms of t mu nu again go back to our original source. So, you have a arbitrary source the origin is there and our point of observation is somewhere here and the vector is r while any point within the source is r prime. So, this is our source. So, we know therefore, that h bar mu nu at the observer point r at time t is given by the Green's function because the Green's function is this. So, therefore, the source term is this much. So, I will all I have to do is I will integrate over d t prime integrate over d cube x prime and take the Green's function and the inhomogeneous part the source term which is minus 1 over c 4 16 pi g t mu nu, but t mu nu at what point it is within the source r prime and t prime. So, this is when r prime t prime. So, when I do the integral note the Green's function depends upon uh, a delta function with t and t prime is there. So, when I integrate over t prime all what will happen is wherever there is t prime it will be t minus mod r minus r prime by c. So, I can directly do a time integral and minus 16 by g by 4 pi will give me minus 4 g by c 4 will come and all we have got is only the spatial integral d cube x prime or I can call it d cube r prime does not matter x prime and r prime are identical. So, r minus r prime and my t mu nu is now a function of r prime, but t prime because of the delta function time integral t prime has been replaced because of the Dirac delta as t minus r minus r prime divided by c. So, it is this which tells me that the, the trace reverse metric fluctuation if I observe at r at time t then it is the retarded time what happened at t minus r minus r prime by c that decides. So, causality is maintained by this expression. But note that our source is very, very far away and we have already made the uh, size part, we have already shown that the size of the source is much, much small compared to the distance at which we are observing this source maximum size is L source and this is much small compared to the distance and therefore, we can make an approximation for mod r minus r prime. So, let us do that approximation. After all, what is mod r minus r prime? This is by definition square root of the vector r r prime dot r r prime which is simply square root of r dot r is r square minus r prime dot r then there will be minus r prime dot r. So, therefore, minus 2 r prime dot r prime then minus r prime dot minus r prime r prime square. And remember 
that r prime is the vector within the source while r is the distance which is very large i can take r square outside of the square root when i comes outside the square root it will become r and i have 1 minus r prime by r whole square then i have minus twice r vector by r dot r prime vector by r and this is a unit vector in the so this is square so this is nothing but r times square root of 1 minus r prime by r whole square minus 2 unit vector n the unit vector is along the line of sight in dot r prime by r but we have already seen that the source size is much small compared to the distance so r prime by r whole square is negligible r prime by r is negligible so this is approximately just r hence we have found that trace reversed metric fluctuation h bar mu nu at r at time t is simply minus 4 g by c 4 now go back this we have seen that largely it is r so it can come out of the integral r and we have just left with the integral which is t mu nu of r prime and t minus r by c because mod r prime minus r is approximately r d cube r prime ok. So, therefore, we have found an integral formula for the trace reverse metric fluctuation. Remember trace reverse meaning this is equal to h mu nu minus half eta mu nu h ok. Now, the question remember we have chosen a coordinate system such that only two independent degrees of freedom are left. So, therefore, we can our coordinate system allows to choose the traceless transverse gauge traceless transverse only 2 degrees of freedom we have already shown that only 2 degrees of freedom only 2 degrees of freedom of h mu nu survives. So, we use the traceless transverse gauge we choose those two degrees such that the trace of h mu nu is 0. So, in the traceless is sometimes also called T T gauge. Choose the two degrees propagating degrees of freedom such that the trace h which is eta mu nu h mu nu is 0 and the spatial part h i j normal is 0 where n j where n j is the unit vector
of unit vector n which is r by mod r. We have encountered this unit vector n. So, the trace is 0 which means that only 2 degrees are there, the 2 degrees are the spatial degrees. Now, the time time components uh, are chosen to be 0. So, here i j run from 1, 2, 3. So, only 2 degrees survive. So, only h 1, 2, h 1, 1, h 2, 2, they are the ones which are non zero. So, therefore, in the T T gauge, the solution is h bar i j, which is simply h i j. The reason is trace is 0, because trace is 0 h bar i j the trace reverse part becomes h i j. So, let me write here because h is 0 the trace reverse part metric is simply h i j and our solution is h i j at r t is simply minus 4 g by c 4 r. integral T i j at r prime T r by c d cube r prime. Okay. So, this is our formula you give me the energy momentum tensor of the matter I get the amplitude of the gravitational wave and causality is maintained because the energy momentum of the matter only the retarded part has to be taken into account. But then the main problem is supposing I want to use this expression, I need to know the energy momentum tensor everywhere where the source is. That is a very difficult uh, problem to handle. So, is there a way that I can get a compact formula where I do not need to know the distribution of energy momentum? over the entire body of the source and the answer is yes that can be done use the local conservation use the local conservation. Which in our case is T mu nu del T mu nu by del x nu is equal to 0. By using this we can use this expression and obtain a formula which does not require the precise way the energy and momentum tensor vary across the body of the source. So, we will now use the local conservation to get the celebrated quadrupole formula which was obtained by Einstein and later by Landau and Lifshitz. How do we do it? Let us look at the following expression because we know that del t mu nu by del x nu is equal to 0 and therefore, what does it mean? Let me take the following object, let me consider the following integral. So, let us write an integral i which is defined to be t 0 0 of t cube r prime and this of course, in evaluated in the retarded time t 0 0 d q bar prime evaluated the retarded time. Now, suppose I want to differentiate this object with respect to time. So, therefore, consider d i by d x 0. What is x 0? x 0 by definition is c into the time because we are in the quasi Minkowskian coordinate system, t is the valid physical time. 
and I want to write what is d i x 0. So, which is by definition d of d x 0 of integral t 0 0 r prime of course, but the retarded time. So, retarded time we know retarded time is nothing but t minus r by c and d cube r prime. But the time derivative this integral is over space and therefore, the time derivative can go inside the integral and becomes partial derivative. So, now it becomes del t 0 0 by del x 0 d cube r prime. Okay. But look at the continuity equation. In the continuity equation t del t mu by del x nu equal to 0 which means that so, del t mu nu by del x nu equal to 0 implies del t 0 nu by del x nu is also 0 which is nothing but 0 is equal to del t 0 0 by del x 0 plus del t 0 some uh, k spatial component k del x k where k goes from 1 2 3. Okay. Hence, here I can replace. So, therefore, T i this object D i by D x 0 becomes minus because this is negative of del T 0 by del x 0 minus del T 0 k by del x k. And then what does one do? One makes integration by parts and because this is over uh, by the way these are all coordinates x prime coordinates because the t minus r everything depends upon r prime these are all r prime. So, one is integrating over r prime and therefore, one can use the Gauss's theorem and one can eliminate this result because this is a boundary term. So, Gauss's theorem using Gauss's theorem we know that this whole thing is a boundary term. So, d i and the boundary goes to infinity d i by d x 0 goes to 0. This only tells me that the global what is t 0 0 is a global energy density which says the total energy is conserved. So, this illustrated the fact that I can use the Gauss's theorem to write the time time components in a particular way. So, that I can use the Gauss's theorem to eliminate the boundary terms. So, let now using this illustration now let me define another, another integral i 1 which I define it to be the following take t 0 0 which is again all with r because the integration is over r prime and the retarded time. So, I will call the retarded time this is the retarded time t retarded. So, it is at t retarded and multiply to this the spatial component x j and another x k you will see why I am doing it but prime these are all prime because the integral is over prime. Okay. Now, you will ask why did I do that? What I do is exactly the same thing I differentiate del i 1 by del x 0. Okay. When I do that this object the derivative will go inside because the integral is over space. So, therefore, this object becomes del t 0 0 by del x 0 x j x prime j x prime k they are space component they will be not affected by the uh, derivative with respect to time they will be as it is. Okay. And then again I use this result and I will write this as 
minus del t 0 because I have already used k here this k this is a dummy variable it is being summed over I will say l del t 0 l by del x prime l times x prime j x prime k t cube x prime ok. But now you will say that look this does not look like a total derivative I cannot use the Gauss's theorem no problems I can take a derivative of the full thing, but then I have to subtract the rest of the derivative all I am saying is this can be also written as minus take a overall derivative with respect to x prime L t 0 L x prime j x prime k d cube x prime. But because I have taken a overall while this was only a derivative over t 0 L. So, I have to subtract the derivative over this, but the, because there was a minus sign it will become plus now and there will be a this is a total derivative term and this is exactly like the Gauss's theorem I can use and Gauss's theorem. So, this volume integral will go to the surface and when the surface goes to infinity T 0 L will go to 0. So, this after the Gauss's theorem this goes to 0. So, I am left with the fact that d, d, d i 1 by d x 0 is only this quantity. So, let us go to that. So, Therefore, d i 1 by d x 0 is simply del by del x prime L of x prime j x prime k t of 0 L d cube x prime. Okay. Yeah. Because the first term has simply gone to 0 because Gauss's theorem says that the volume integral goes to the surface integral and when you take the full volume the surface goes to infinity at infinity there is no matter t 0 L simply goes to 0. Now, what I will do is I will just expand it after all x prime j x prime k they are all spatial and when I expand it I get first of all when this derivative acts on that that becomes delta j l this as it is x prime k plus x prime j as it is this derivative when it acts is chronica delta k l t 0 l d cube x prime and hence this object becomes when l part is taken into account it simply becomes x prime k l being summed over t 0 j plus x prime j when l is summed over t 0 k d cube x prime. Note that all these are evaluated at retarded time. So, we have got this result, but remember what was i 1? i 1 was by definition i 1 was by definition t 0 0 x prime j multiplied by x prime k d cube x prime all right this was t 0. Now, what I do is I differentiate once again. So, I want now this is d i by d x 0 now I want d 2 i 1 by d x 0 square that means this quantity this is already i 1 by d x 0 this I want to differentiate with respect to x 0 again.
the derivative will go inside because the integral is over space x prime k x prime j they are all spatial coordinates. So, the time derivative will only hit this. So, this object will become x prime k del t 0 j by del x 0 plus x prime j del t 0 k by del x 0 d cube x prime. All right. But then continuity equation, remember what does continuity equation say? Continuity equation says that del t i uh, del, so j is fixed, so let us fix j is fixed. We know that local conservation, so del t mu nu by del x nu equal to 0 also tells me that since you have del 0 j also tells me that del t mu by del x since this 0 has to be there. So, therefore, what I will do is I will make this object j mu. So, 0 is equal to this which means that del t 0 j by del x 0 plus del t i j by del x i. Okay. So, this is 0. So, in other words, in other words what we have got is the result that del t 0 j by del x 0 is same as minus del t i j by del x i. Substituting this result here, we get therefore, there will be overall minus sign because of this minus sign x prime k del t i j by del x prime i because these are all inside x prime. So, del x prime i plus x prime j del t 0 k del t uh, i k del t i k by del x prime i. The overall minus sign I have taken it outside d cube x prime. But then as you can see that this is still not in the total time derivative, but I want to use Gauss's theorem. So, therefore, I will write this as minus del of del x prime i of x prime k t i j and similarly x prime j t i k overall d cube x prime. Okay. So, let me write it in more proper way.
sometimes I am using x prime, sometimes r prime, but it is understood. So, I have made it a total derivative, which again I will use Gauss's theorem, but there is also some terms because I have taken the total derivative. So, I must take derivative over this, so that I have to add terms del x prime by k by del x prime i is Kronecker delta k i t i j d cube x prime plus similarly here also is the Kronecker delta j i t i k d cube x prime. Now, notice what the magic has taken place i is being summed over. So, this becomes t k j here also is t j k, but energy momentum tensor is symmetric. So, let us systematically collect and the other term because of Gauss's theorem because of Gauss's theorem the first term goes to 0 at the surface at infinity hence the result we have is d 2 i 1 by d x 0 square okay, this term d 2 i 1 by d x 0 square the first term has gone to 0, this is t k j, this is t j k. So, therefore, okay. but energy moment of tensor is symmetric, so, but t mu nu is t nu mu. Okay. So, this is becomes just 2 t j k t cube x prime all right. So, in other words we have proved that this implies that t i j d cube x prime is half of second derivative d 2 d x 0 whole square and what was i 1? i 1 was simply t 0 0, if it is i j then it is x prime i x prime j t cube x prime. Why was this formula needed? Because we had obtained the gravitational wave amplitude was given in terms of integral of t i j d cube r r. So, now we can just use whatever we did to obtain the gravitational wave amplitude which is the in the TT gauge. So, there is a half there was a minus 4 g. So, it becomes minus 2 g now by C 4 r and we have now half factor makes the thing 4 go up and we have d 2 by d x 0 whole square of t 0 0 evaluated at the retarded time t minus t r by c x prime i x prime j t cube x prime. Okay. So, this is the expression we have got. Now, what is t 0 0? So, that is the first, first thing we will ask t 0 0 is the energy density. So, when we talked about energy momentum tensor, then we know interpretation for T 0 0 is energy density. For source that has non relativistic matter distribution, energy density is simply rho c square for non relativistic source. where rho is 
the mass density. So, what we have got is that the in the traceless transverse traceless gauge the true degrees of gravitational wave is given by minus 2 g by c 4 r d 2 by d x 0 square mass density into x square c sorry mass density to c square x prime i x prime x prime j d cube x prime. But x 0 square is nothing but c square t square. So, this c square will cancel with this t square so that our final hence in t t gauge I have h i j r at time t that c square gets cancelled we have 2 g by c 4 r. Now, there is only time derivative because x 0 had c into t that c square get got cancelled with the c square in t 0 0 and now we have mass density again retarded x prime i x prime j d cube x prime. Okay. But what is this mass density and two spatial coordinate that is the energy moment that is a quadrupole tensor for the matter. So, q i j if I define q i j of time as mass density. So, r prime t minus r by c x prime i x prime j d cube x prime. Remember q i j is only a function of time because I am integrating over the spatial volume of the mass times ith component of x jth component of x this is the quadrupole moment. And what we have obtained is a celebrated quadrupole formula for gravitational wave generation which tells me that oh this t remembers the retarded time. So, with uh, so t minus r by c. So, therefore, h i j in the t t gauge gravitational wave amplitude is simply minus 2 g by c 4 r into d 2 by d t square of the quadrupole moment tensor i j at the retarded time t minus r by c. This is the quadrupole formula. This formula is very, very useful in giving the gravitational wave amplitude for a binary system where two ma material particles are going around each other and since they are point masses for point mass we can easily evaluate the quadrupole tensor and we can obtain that if such a binary system is at a distance r from us what kind of a gravitational uh, wave amplitude we will expect from such a quadrupole tensor changing with time. There is another way of making some order of uh, magnitude um, estimate, order of magnitude estimate. These are basically dimensional argument. After all, note second derivative d2 by dt square of qij is nothing but qij by time square. But x prime by time, x prime by time, that is the velocity. So, this essentially and density integrated over space is mass, mass times velocity square, but what is mass times velocity square? Half mv square is the kinetic energy. So, therefore, this tells me that the gravitational wave amplitude is nothing but 
minus 2 g by C 4 r second time derivative is related to kinetic energy, but is the asymmetric non spherical kinetic energy. So, kinetic energy non spherical part of the kinetic energy. So, if you have any source then using this formula we can estimate the gravitational wave amplitude if we can estimate what is the kinetic energy that basically is involved with the asymmetric movement of the source all right and indeed it is a very useful formula uh, to estimate the gravitational wave amplitude for any non relativistic system of mass movement. What I will not show is what is the kind of energy flux that gravitational wave uh, carries that is not part of this course, but uh, one can give the following argument to show that gravitational waves indeed carry energy. So, do gravitational waves carry energy that is the first thing one would like to know. A simple thought experiment simple thought experiment this is due to Herman Bondi Herman Bondi and independently by Feynman this thought experiment shows that gravitational wave better carry energy. So, imagine that you have a rod and you put two lightly residing rings inside uh, which is which can slide on the rod. What will happen when gravitational wave is incident? When gravitational waves in they come and fall on these two rings on the rod, the rod is a very dense rod that will not much get compressed or stretched by the gravitational waves. The rings can move this way or that way when gravitational waves come in. So, therefore, when the rings move back and forth, because of the friction due to the rods, the rod will get heated up. Movement of the rings and friction heats up the rod. So, therefore, where is the energy coming from? The energy that heats up the rod must come from uh, the gravitational wave. So, gravitational waves gravitational waves responsible for heating so this implies gravitational waves carry energy. 